Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a live curator training. We got a jam-packed session lined up for you today. I'm very excited about diving into the specifics on how we can help you get more listings in 2024. Can you believe it's 2024? That's wild. Uh, before we kick things off, though, we got uh, a whole bunch of people registered for today's session in the chat for me. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. Give me the thumbs up there, and we'll be get, we'll get ready to rock and roll here. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Ron. Ron. <laughs> Appreciate it, Jody. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Cool. Hey, Tim. Good to see you on the call again. Hey, Camille. All right, awesome. So we, like I mentioned, today's session is a session in which. Hey, Tyler, good to see you in the call. Today's session is a session in which we're going to be breaking down the different strategies and tactics that you can be using to run a listing-first business. The way that we think about this at Curator is we believe 2024 is all about listings. We believe it's the year of the listing, and so are we. We are focused all of our energy, all of our effort on helping our clients get more listings. And so what we want to do today is take this as a training opportunity to give you a bit of behind the scenes of what we've learned over the last this last year and some of the lessons that you can apply to your business to run a listing first business. Before we dive into it though, quick poll question for everyone in the chat right now, which is, I'm going to launch this right now uh, while people are pouring in today's session. How many listings and just and you can see the poll is going to pop up on the screen for you in just a moment. How many listings are you hoping to get next year? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We got some, we got some people in, in the in the room here quite ambitious. We're looking at 50 plus. We'll give this poll just a moment. And this is this is really important at a high level understanding how many listings you want to get next year, how many properties you want to list next year is going to dictate how much time, energy, and resources you put into your marketing strategy. If you're a solo agent today who is generally getting their business from their SOI, and historically, you let's say you're listing 15 homes a year, you it's safe to assume that number has probably declined from 21 to 23 and it likely will continue to decline in 24. So you have to figure out ways, how can I actually grow my network, grow my database to get more listings? But you got to get clear on this from the jump. And so right now, just some of the, some of the results, I'll share, share with everyone on today's call, just so we know uh, what everyone's goals are. Right now, 14% of the audience, 14% of the people who are attending today are saying, hey, my goal is 10 listings this year. Those people are probably solo agents who are looking to make the transition from being a buyer's agent to a listing agent. We got about 38% at 20, 24% at 30, uh, about 8% at 40, and we have nearly 20% at 50 plus. So that's actually you know great for everybody on today's call, whether you want to get 10 or you want to get 50 plus, this webinar is going to break down how you can structure your day in the right way to achieve that end state you're looking to achieve. Okay, so on that note, let's kick things off here. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna dive right into it today. Uh, bear with me one second. Okay, so <clears throat> today's session, 2024 Listing Attraction Playbook. Let me give you a little bit of a high level. I was traveling across the country, all across North America this past year. I've spoken in front of over 25,000 agents. I've met some of the best highest producing, most talented agents in the country. And what, I, what I've done this year is I've been on a listening tour. I've been talking to the agents who are thriving in this sort of uncertain market that we're in right now, this sort of frustratingly foggy market that we're in right now. And by talking to these agents to better understand what are these agents doing to succeed? What are they doing to win? Well, everyone else is complaining about interest rates, inventory, and inflation. What are these agents actually doing to grow their business? And what that actually boils down to is there are what I would categorize as five key pillars in your business that will drive listings. Five key pillars. These are the five key pillars that I found to be to exist within all of the listing agents I was able to connect with. Now, let me give a quick disclaimer. Not every top listing agent has all five pillars, but almost all of them have at least two. And so what I would say is, as we as we break this down and we share these strategies with you, 
keep in mind that I don't want to overwhelm you. I don't want to inundate you with you. I don't want you to say, hey, there's there's 50 things that I want you to start doing. I want you to identify, and you'll know better than me. I want you to identify what are the two or three pillars you think you can really master in 24. And then let's figure out a way to prioritize those as we move forward. So number one, no surprise to anybody on today's call, your SOI. Your sphere of influence is almost in, uh, across the board the best place to get listings. If you stay in touch with your past clients, you you nurture your past clients, you you you, you love on your on your past clients, you're going to get more referrals. You're going to get more repeat business. In fact, we did a, a study on this. We took the largest MLS in the country and we looked at the top 10% of listing agents in that MLS. And we found that the top 10% of listing agents were four times more likely to get a repeat customer than the average agent reported by NAR. In fact, uh, when you look at the data as we have, the uh, the called the retention rate, if someone you help buy a house that actually lists with you is about 12%. Meaning, if for every for the average agent, if they ha help a hundred buyers, uh, only twelve of those buyers, when they list their property, will actually list with them. We have a really bad leaky bucket problem in our industry. When you contrast that to top agents, agents who are at the top one percent of the MLS, what you find is they are actually four times more likely. Some of them even five to six times more likely to retain that customer. Meaning, a top agent who has a hundred buyers, they're going to get fifty to fifty-five listings from their buyer side business they closed many years ago compared to an average agent. So loving on your database is one of the best things you can do to drive an ROI and to run a listing first business. Number two, social media. Now, you know me, if, you, if you've ever been a part of a coaching or training or mastermind with me, you know I am hyper specific in my in my training. I'm not going to just say, hey, post to Instagram. I'm going to give you the stories, the ideas, the angles, the calls to action. I'm going to give you everything you need to be successful in the space. What's clear to me though is top listing agents are they don't care whether they like social media or not. They are active. They're sharing stories. They're shooting videos. They're posting. They're giving people a behind the scenes look at what it's like to, to sell properties and help buyers buy. They are active. And, and there are many little things that I'll break down in today's session, little things that you can do regardless of your comfort level of social media. I mean, th these are things that you can apply to your business, even if you don't like getting in front of the camera. There are other tactics you can use to, to accomplish the goal of actually getting listings from social media. But social media is absolutely a huge pillar for listings. And the reason why, and this is important, the reason why is because your brand recognition and your and people knowing you exist and seeing people seeing you help others achieve their goals is the best proof and the best advertising you can have for your business. Because they're, they're going to look at you helping other potential sellers list their property and sell their property and say, oh, you know, if they help that person, they could probably help me. And so this is a, this just a, from a strategy perspective, showcasing the sweat, highlighting the fact that you're the work you're doing uh, in real time is such an underrated strategy. We have this huge problem in real estate where we keep telling everyone it's easy, it's simple, it's fast, it's convenient. Like all the marketing, all the branding, all the messaging. And like, and that has devalued the agent, in my opinion. And everyone on today's call knows, yeah, some deals are a layup, but but some deals, like, no, they're not. Like you've earned you like you you've earned like the last five commission deals, commission checks on that last deal you just did because it was such a nightmare. So showing the sweat is a strategy that helps, I think, improve the value proposition for uh, top agents. Number three, farming. Farming is a fantastic way for you to get less things. Now, this is the mistake everybody makes. And I'll give you some examples in today's session. The mistake everybody makes is they, they send one postcard or they'll choose a farm and they'll kind of put it on autopilot and send like six just listed and just sold postcards. And, and they're like, well, I didn't get any listings from that. So I'm going to stop. Now the old adage, and I, I, I guarantee you've heard this. People have said to you, Hey, in order for you to get an ROI from your farm, it's going to take, you know, 12 to 18 months, just in the chat let, right now, let me know. Have you heard that adage before in order for me to get 
an ROI from farming, it's going to take 12 to 18 months. And I bet you for most of you, like you've heard that. And that, can you think about something that's more discouraging that, hey, I want you to take a bunch of money. I want you to put it into sort of like this, this investment, but don't expect anything back for 12 months or 24 months. And so here's the thing is that that is true. That is true. But there are ways in which you can accelerate your ROI with farming that involve layering in additional strategies on top of direct mail. So if you're listening to me right now and say, Jimmy, I, I want to invest in farming, but I got to get an ROI in three months. I got to get a return. Well, then in order for us to do that, we cannot be passive and waiting for our phone to ring. We got to play offense. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Also, and this is important. We have to forget about putting our direct mail on autopilot, sending pre-canned, generic, auto-generated, boring, just sold, just listed cards. People have been conditioned to ignore that. So our strategy when it comes to farming is be different on purpose. That's how we stand out in the mailbox, and that's how we get a better ROI in a much faster way. So we'll go much deeper on that. Number four is leads. I see I see my client, Ellie George, on the call today. Hey, Ellie, great to see you on the call today. Um, I'll give a quick Ellie George story here in just a second. When I when I say leads, I'm going to define leads for everybody here. The way I think about leads is leads are are basically a list of contacts. It's a name, a phone number, an email address, and maybe a physical address. Now, how you acquire that lead can be through digital advertising, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google ads, retargeting ads. It can be through buying lists from you know prop stream or getting them from your title rep to do circle prospecting. You can get expired lists from Red X. You can get uh, you can uh, and, and Ellie will 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 give some love here in the chat. Ellie's big into probate right now. You can get a probate list. Um, through different sources out there as well. All of all the these all these lists, if you will, have one thing in common. These are simply someone's information. And you now can then contact that person. And I think we spend way too much time thinking about how we just, you know, pursuing like the best possible lead source. The reality is, is that even if someone fills out a form on your website, unless they know, like, and trust you, it's still going to be a cold lead. If you're going to circle prospect, it's still going to be a cold lead. And if you're going to be following up with people where you don't have a pre-existing relationship, then the way in which you follow up has got to fundamentally change compared to a warm referral. So leads can be a great source of listings, expired, FISBOs, probate, Google, Facebook, Instagram, circle prospecting lists. These can be a great source of listing, but you've got to have the right follow-up strategy. So we'll break that down in today's, in today's uh, session. And lastly, lastly, brand. Now, brand, there are many, many way, definitions of brand. And, you know, people say brand is, is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And the way I think about brand is I think about brand is the association that's built through direct or indirect experiences. I'll, I'll say that again. Brand is the association built through direct or indirect experiences. So if someone reads reviews of you online, that's the, that's the only experience they have with your brand. And that then helps build an association that this person's great at their job. If you're promoting your listings and advertising and marketing and emailing and sending mailers around your listings, that, and they see that and they experience that, then they're going to say, well, this agent is really good at marketing. And, if they're, and that's really important to me. When I sell my house, I want an agent who's going to go the extra mile. I don't want an agent who's going to put the home, put a sign on the yard and just you know, pray for buyers. I want someone who's gonna who's got a plan, who's got a strategy. So the your brand is the association that's built through direct or indirect experiences. And so more that the more that people can experience your brand, your reviews, your marketing, your content, your videos, the the, the stronger that association becomes with the things that you care about. They want you want them to associate you as an expert, as a professional, as someone who's going to help guide them through the process, as someone who's going to help them achieve their goals. That's why the agents who have done an, a remarkable job at building their brand, they get a a ton of inbound business. Hey, I've been following you online for a while or I just read your reviews or I googled you and you came up as a top agent. I'd like to learn more about working together. 
you know, I was talking to my client, Sam Park yesterday and him, him and his team, he just got a hundred, he just got a hundred uh, unit development uh, in his, in his market in Chino Hills, in the Chino Hills area. And so this is the developer and we all know working with developers, they're picky, right? Builders, they're picky. This developer, you know what he did? He was in the area and he was Googling like best real estate agent. And because our client Sam Park has 256 five-star reviews on Google, he picked up the phone and he called Sam. Within 30 minutes, Sam was actually at the site where they're building these townhomes. Within another 30 minutes, they were back at his office meeting, working on a deal to work together to sell these 100 townhomes. Like, so the this experience began with the guy Googling and seeing who the best agent was. But then Sam reinforced that experience by actually like being Johnny on the spot, going out there and looking at the property and giving the guy a call back. Like that is brand for a, so you got to get in the position where brand becomes a huge part of what you do. So we'll talk about that at a deeper level. What can you be doing from a marketing perspective to build that brand to generate inbound leads? So uh, the question you're probably asking yourself right now is, do these strategies work? The strategies I'm about to share with you today, do they work? And I want to give you some data behind this. So one of the things that I did is I partnered with Tom Ferry this past year. Uh, and it's been such an incredible experience because Tom is such a blue flame thinker, just someone who I have just the utmost respect for and someone who I've loved working with this past year. And actually in the chat right now, let me know, have you seen me speak at a Tom Ferry event this past year? I'm just curious because uh, I've been, like I said earlier, I've been all over the country. Uh, yeah, a few people at Summit. Yeah, Summit was a, certainly an out-of-body experience. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And so uh, one of the things that we did, uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, one of the things that Tom and I did is we, we, we developed a program called 100K in 100 Days. Uh, and we said, we want to help, help agents generate listings in this environment where everyone thinks no one's selling. And so we said, if we're going to build this program, there are certain constraints we have to have in place. Number one, all the agents who are going to participate in this, this, this kind of experiment, uh, have to be able to do it regardless of their experience or tenure. It's easier to get an agent who's got 25 years experience to help them get 50 listings than an agent who's got three years of experience to get 50 listings. So we had to say, regardless of their experience, we want to help them get listings. Number two, we wanted to focus on bottom of the funnel opportunity. This is, means you know, we, we want to get an ROI now. We want to get you customers now. And number three, we want to say, hey, there is no tech or previous marketing experience required, meaning we don't want you to become an expert in video, or expert in AI, expert in SEO in order to get results. We want to make this accessible regardless of your technical or marketing experience. And so the results have been this. Uh, for the agents that are part of Tom Ferry's ecosystem who participated, they've made 1.8 million attempts. These are calls, these are texts, these are emails. They've had 118,000 conversations, of which they have booked 11,845 listing appointments, and they have taken on 4,657 listings. Notably, we think that number will actually increase quite significantly because we know that some people are going to take a want to probably wait to the spring of 24 to actually list their property. So the strategies I'm going to break down for you today, we generated 4,657 listings. We did this in 53 days. I want you to let that soak in for a second. I, I tweeted this recently. I said, most agents are two or three bad months from going out of business. And I think the inverse is also true. Most agents are also two or three mo good months away from having getting the momentum they need to have an incredible year. And so you can turn on a dime in this industry if you execute the right strategies. And so here are the strategies. We're going to go over the ZMA. Now, for those of you who have heard me talk about the ZMA, great. This is a refresher. I'll, I'll go a bit deeper on this. The ZVA, you'll love the strategy and using CMAs. We'll talk about the hidden sellers strategy, finding sellers and finding listings with your buyer lead strategy. We'll talk about direct response advertising, how to actually send an email, send a mailer that gets a call, that gets a click, that gets a reply. We'll talk about prospecting, the lessons we've learned at Curator, making hundreds of thousands of dials and how you can apply that to the way in which you follow up with your leads. And again, regardless of so those leads are internet leads, uh, Facebook leads, Google leads, probate leads, like we'll talk deeper about that. And then finally, we'll talk about listings. We are, at Curator, we are 
absolutely committed to helping our clients take their listings and turn them into more listings. So in today's session, I'll actually give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look at some of the technology that we're building to facilitate this. So for all my curator clients on today's call, you guys are going to love this. It's going to be a little bit of an update for you as well. Uh, but we'll show some of the technology that we're building for clients because we believe if you can market your listings the right way, you can take every listing and turn it into more listings. And that is a fantastic way to grow your listing side business. Now, let me be clear. At the end of today's session, what we're going to do is, as I said at the beginning, the reason I asked the question of how many listings do you want to get this year is because I'm going to give you the exact amount of time you have to spend marketing and prospecting to achieve your goals. We've done the math. We've done the analysis, having tracked now thousands of listings. So we're going to give you the exact daily requirement of what you need to do to generate whatever your goal is. So whether you want to get 10 listings, 20 listings, 30 listings, 50 plus, we're going to give you the math. And this is going to be so insanely helpful. So you can properly strategize and properly kind of allocate the time and resources needed to achieve your goals in 24. Okay. So on that note, quick poll question for you here. I'll pull this up if I can, if I can figure out what the polls are. Here we go. Uh, I want to know right now, uh, let's pull this up right here. What's your opinion of 24? Are you more optimistic th that uh, this year, 2024 is going to be a better year or are you less? Like, will 2024 be a better year than 2023? Yes or no? Very simple question. Will 2024 be a better year than 2023? Let me know in the poll right now. Look at the responses. Wow. This is why I love working with entrepreneurs. We are always optimistic. 96 per, I'm going to end it right now. 96% of everyone who's in today's session believes that 24 will be a better year. I completely agree. Because even if it is, let's say from a production perspective, 4 million houses sold, we are prepared. We know what's coming. And so I think interest rates will drop. I think inventory will rise. I think we'll sort of this log jam of backed up sellers who've just had like haven't listed their property because they've been holding on for the market to to figure out what it wants to be. I think all of that is is going to finally settle in. And I think twenty four is going to be a great year, even if we've had the same number of houses sold. We are on this call. We are going to be prepared. What made twenty three a hard year? was the speed in which the market shifted. None of us were really prepared for that. And so we spent much of the year, maybe you guys can relate to this. We spent much of the year kind of on our back foot, just kind of getting caught up, trying to get our balance. Well, now like our feet are on the ground. We know what's going on. And that I think puts us in a position of strength, at least in my opinion. All right, so let's talk about the strategies here. Uh, this is a picture of the CEO of Costco. His name is Jim Senegal. Now, Jim Senegal uh, famously, famously uh, had a, uh, one of the things he did with Costco to attract people is he would sell hot dogs and sodas. And actually in the chat for me right now, how much does a hot, go hot dog and a soda cost at Costco's? Just let me know in the chat right now. How much does a hot dog and soda cost at Costco's? Some of you might have inflation right, right now. We got some. We got some Costco fans, Costco members. That's right. It's a dollar fifty, right? Maybe a little bit more tax. Been a member for a long time, Olga. Love it. That's right. It's a dollar fifty. Now, does Costco make any money on the Costco hot dog? Of course not. But they do it. They do it because it gets people in the store. It's the hook. It is the hook. And in fact, the, the the crazy story is when a new CEO came on board and they went to Jim in Senegal and say, hey, Jim, you know, the cost of the hot dog hasn't gone up in 25 plus years. We have to raise the price of the hot dog. Jim Senegal's response was, if you change the price of the effing hot dog, I'll kill you. <laughs> so you could tell the hot dog is a sacred cow at Costco's. And so the reason I share this story with you is because if you want to become a listing first agent, 
You have to have a Costco hot dog strategy. You have to give something away for free. Way too many agents are waiting for people to raise their hand. And as a result, not getting the opportunities they're looking for and not having the not hitting the goals they want to hit. So the Costco hot dog strategy is let's put a little bit of work in, let's give something away for free in return. We'll earn the right to have a conversation, book an appointment, get a listing. So let's break this down. The ZMA, the ZVA, and the CMA strategy. So the, the, C, the ZMA strategy is so insanely simple. And if you were at Summit, you heard me coach this, but this is take this as a reminder for you to kind of get back on your horse and start doing this. But every day, two or three times a day, you're taking someone who's in your database, a client you work with, or someone who's in your SOI, you're taking a picture of their home on Zillow, you're searching their home on Zillow, taking a picture of their home on Zillow, and you're sending this exact text message. Hey, Olga, I was on Zillow earlier today looking for a few properties in your neighborhood, and I thought I'd check out your home's estimate. They estimate your home's value is 1.8 million. Then you would include a screenshot of their estimate on your phone. Then you text them the second uh, line, which is, I have my opinion, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Now, this format of two to three ZMAs per day will start to get two or three conversations per day, which will eventually lead to likely one to two listing appointments a week, which will then likely lead to two to three listings a month. I mean, that math just works. And so what we're doing is we're not giving them, we're not asking for people to uh, like uh, tell us if they if they think this is right or wrong. We're asking for their opinion. We're, this is important. Whether it's high, whether it's low, whether it's spot on, we are absolutely, we don't care about that. We're starting, we're starting a conversation, a real estate related conversation. So the ZMA strategy has got to be in your daily SOP. Uh, Savannah was asking, what are your thoughts on doing this for seller leads? Fantastic question. Absolutely. If you've got a name, if you've got an address, if you've got someone's uh, contact information, send them a ZMA. So I'm a huge fan of doing this. If you're generating cheap seller leads through home value ads, I'm a huge fan of applying this as part of your strategy, as an example. All right, let's keep building on this. Let's say you work through your ZMA and now you're like, all right, hey, I've got a hundred people I've already done this for. What can I do next? Well, what I would then do is I would do the, the ZMA to my farm. And what I, would, what I would do is I'd sit down with my team and I would say, here's our farm. Let's identify people who have owned their house for more than seven years, who have 50% equity, let's say, in their property. So it's a, it's a good cohort of customers who I think will likely sell. And again, add your own filters. You know your farm better than I know your farm. So where is, the, where is their higher turnover? Everyone's got low turnover, but there are certain segments like micro markets that will have a higher turnover rate. Meaning if someone lived in the house for 12 years and has 50% equity, they're far more likely to sell than someone who's owned a house for one year and has you know just bought the property and has like 3% equity. They would only sell if it was distress. This other person is going to sell because it's a lifestyle change, right? The death, divorce, diapers, diamonds, the Ds, diplomas, right? right? The list kind of goes on. So once you do this, the, the ZMA for your uh, SOI, you can also do your ZMA for the farm. Uh, shout out to my guy. Sharon over at Real, uh, because him and I, uh, he shared the strategy with me recently, and I just I loved it so much. You print it out, you put a sticky note on it, and you ask a simple question: Would you sell your home for ten percent more than this? Text me at insert, or you could say, "Hey, this is wrong." Text me at insert. The the CTA on that just needs to be simple and clear and straightforward. Uh, and I don't, I don't care if it's 10%, 7%, 3%, 5%. The idea is hyper-personalization with your outbound prospecting. So the ZMA, you can text to your SOI, but you also can print it out, put a sticky note on it, and then have your assistant, your admin, your in, intern go around and drop this off in people's mailboxes. A little bit of sweat equity, it will go a very long way. All right, let's keep building on this. Print out 100 of these per week, drop off 20 per day, and then follow up with a phone call. Hey, this is Jimmy calling with ABC Realty. I know you weren't expecting my call. The reason I'm reaching out is because we dropped off 
a letter in your mailbox this past week. And I was wondering if you had a chance to review it yet. Oh, no, we didn't take a look at it. Oh, well, we're just actually printing out your estimate. And, you know, they estimate your home's worth 1.4 million. Is that a number that you'd sell at? Or are you looking to accomplish? A, like, are you looking to do more there? Like, you can kind of go in different direction that, from that perspective. So this strategy of ZMA, work your SOI, so people who you already know, and then ZMA for your farm gives you the opportunity to really squeeze as much juice out of this strategy as possible. And by the way, quick pro tip for you. I'm a huge fan of PropStream. PropStream means to start paying me money because I like recommend these guys everywhere. Uh, but I do love the product. The reason I love the product is because you can build lists uh, that with hyper specificity in your farm. I would recommend choosing someone who has an interest rate above 4% who's owned the house for seven plus years because there's an indication that individual likely didn't refinance because they were probably thinking about maybe putting the house on the market. All right, so let's keep building, ZMA. Next, let's talk about what I call the ZVA, Zillow versus agent. Now, this is a strategy my client Jacob Stark executed, and I love this strategy so much. And I just, I just wish everybody in today's call would do this every time they sell a property. In the chat for me right now, let me know what does Zillow do? What what happens to the Zestimate when you list a property? Right? Katie's saying it goes up. What does it go up to, Katie? What happens? Here's a question. What happens to the estimate when you list a property? All right, that's right, Jill. It changes to the list price. Talk, talk about the biggest punch in the gut. If you sell a property, if you list a property for five hundred thousand dollars and you sell it for five hundred thousand dollars, it doesn't appear you did anything. You just sold it for the estimate. But what people don't realize is maybe two weeks ago the estimate was four hundred thirty thousand dollars. But you have no record or proof that you actually sold that property for $70,000 above the estimate. And so what you're looking at right now is how to take advantage of that strategy. So this is, I want you to write this down. I want you to circle it three times. Before you put the home in the MLS, I want you to take a screenshot of the estimate every time, every single time. So before you put the home in the MLS, take a screenshot of the estimate. Then after you sell it, now you have this before and after to showcase how effectively you've done your job. So what you're looking at right now is the Zillow versus agent. This is the exact copy. We're going to keep rolling here because we have we have a lot of, lot of ground to cover. And I realize we're already 30 minutes in today's session. I have like 20 more ideas for you. But just take screenshots of this. Your neighbor recently trusted us to selling your home. We Zillow estimated the home was worth seven hundred seventeen thousand. We sold it for eight hundred twenty thousand. It's a hundred and twenty thousand dollar difference. Include the screenshot, right? The before and the after. Jacob does a fantastic job with this. Then this is the reason why we're reaching out. Anytime a home sells in your neighborhood, it has a big impact on your home's value. However, you can't trust Zillow to get your home value right. Would you like me to prepare a home value report for you today? And then he has a, a couple additional calls to action here as well. And by the way, we're gonna we're gonna share the recording with you on this, so you can take a, take some screenshots as well. But this is the Zillow versus agent strategy. So my recommendation is every single time you list a property, take a screenshot, and every time you sell that property for ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent above the original estimate, that is a marketable moment you now have. That's a direct mail campaign that you can then send out to people who live in that area. And think about how different, I want you to soak this in for a second. Think about how different that is than the traditional just sold postcard. Like this is how we start to accelerate the ROI in direct mail as we start executing creative ideas. All right, shout out to my guy, Ken Pozak. Let's keep it rolling here. Uh, if you're not following Ken Pozak uh, on, yeah, by the way, Katie, you can do this. Let me just back up for one second. Uh, every one of these ideas can become social media reels, can become posts, can become stories. Like we want to stretch our thinking. This can become blog posts on our websites. They become like case studies. Like we can take, this is a really important pro tip. And thank you for reminding me, Katie. A good marketing idea oftentimes can be translated to other channels. So a great YouTube video can become my email campaign. A great email campaign can become Instagram reel. A really successful Instagram reel can become a 
can we direct mail campaign? Like you have to think like that. It doesn't have to always be a new campaign for every channel. You can cross pollinate, if you will. All right. Shout out to my guy, Ken Pozak. Ken Pozak, and I'll walk back up here for a second, generated $80,000 in commission off of the CMA strategy. CMA strategy, which is a proactive CMA. Uh, also, if you're not following Ken Pozak on Instagram, maybe my team can drop a link to Ken Pozak's Instagram channel or his YouTube channel. Just say, uh, send him a quick DM. Let him know. Uh, appreciate the love of him sharing this with us. Uh, this is an example of a campaign where effectively his team sent out 30 CMAs. They booked 12 listing appointments. They took five listings, sold all five, and got one buyer and totally generate eighty thousand dollars in revenue in one week this is the exact strategy that ken pozak used hey mary i just wanted to do a quick equity update for you it looks like homes like yours are selling between 625 675 depending on finishing amenities i'm not sure if you have any thoughts on selling this year but if you don't i want to know where you are at so send the cma to an email and then text the client letting them know that you did it and if they don't respond pick up the phone and call. Thanks, Bethany. Pick up the phone and call. I was texting with Ken a few weeks ago and Ken's like, yeah, we just, we just, cause this was like early in the year. He's like, yeah, we just did this like a couple weeks ago and we got four more listings. So now he's almost up to 10 listings already from this one strategy. I mean, talk about an ROI on, on just marketing. Like he's spending less than a week doing this and he's got nine listings just this year from this one strategy. So I'm a huge fan of this strategy. Send a CMA via email, text the client, follow up with a phone call. All right. Now, okay, we're going to now enter into one of my favorite strategies. We just rolled this out. And by the way, I didn't cover this at Summit. So for those of you who saw me speak at Summit, this is a new strategy that we're coaching our clients on now. I'm going to need more, more water for today's webinar. Okay. So <clears throat> this strategy, let's, let me kind of break this down for you. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of brand. How like, you know, what you post and what you share online builds an association with consumers that then gets them to pick up the phone, call you and say, hey, I want to work with you. Uh, and yeah, and, and Cheryl, quick shout out to Jimmy Burgess. Like, I love Jimmy Burgess. Jimmy Burgess is is my guy. Uh, so Jimmy Burgess is, I think, the the father of the unsolicited CMA strategy. So we got we got to give Jimmy Burgess uh, got to get Jimmy Burgess's flowers. Uh, that dude is just a rock star. Uh, if you're not following Jimmy Burgess, by the way, my team will drop a, a link to his YouTube channel. Uh, Jimmy's just the guy. Uh, all right. So let's keep going. If you do a CMA for somebody, so let's walk through the scenario. Nancy, uh, Nancy just did a CMA for one of her clients and one of her clients who bought a house three years ago has now gained $103,000 in equity. <laughs> now, she sent that to her client. She sent that to her client, right? She sent the email and then she texts that client. But that is what we call a curator, a marketable moment. That is something that, that is something you could share online to generate inbound leads. And here's how that works. We call it the working in public strategy. And so when you've done a CMA and one of your clients have gained a lot of equity, you should post it on social media exactly like, Mama T, Tam Montgomery. By the way, shout out to Tam Montgomery. I mean, if you want to follow an agent who is like leading from the front or broker who's leading from the front, follow Mama T, Tam Montgomery in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, absolute rock star. What you're looking at right now is Tammy sold the house in 21. She did an equity evaluation. The customer is getting 100K in, in two years. And then she has a call to action. If you want a free equity evaluation, just DM me your address and I'll have it in a jiffy. So wrap your head around this concept. She's been doing the kind of Jimmy Burgess, Ken, Ken Pozak unsolicited CMA. And when she comes across like a, like someone who's getting a ton of equity in their property, she's turned the corner. She's posting to social media. Hey, not giving away their personal information. Hey, I just did an equity update for a client and they gained a ton of equity in the last two years. What this does, think about this for a second. It creates this like, Hmm. I wonder how much equity I've gained since I've actually bought my property. And by having a direct call to action saying, DM me and I'll get you the information. She generated three inbound responses immediately from people who are looking to get information about their home's value. So this is how we can get, deliver value to our SOI. And are you with me on this, right? Deliver value to our SOI and then extend that, that moment to attract people beyond our current 
customer base. We've in marketing, you've got to always be marketing, always be selling, always be kind of growing that network you got right now. So the working in public strategy is just a massively, massively underutilized strategy and opportunity. So if you're doing a CMA a day, then you can take that and turn that into a public post. You also can turn that into an Instagram poll. I'm just a huge fan of the strategy. This is, I just like use this exact words. I just did an equity update for one of my clients who gained $155,000 in equity in the last four years. Do you want an equity, equity report for your home? Yes, please. What's an equity report? Help me buy so I can get this kind of cash. I mean, this is the absolute perfect poll. You can include a picture of the property or even like a little bit of a screenshot of the of the CMA behind the scenes without blocking out the person's information and then post it to Instagram. And by the way, let me know in the chat, are, are you attending this webinar because you are either in my IG broadcast channel or you got a DM from my team inviting you to today's call? Did you come from Instagram right now? Yes or no in the chat? Awesome. And I think the rest of you probably came from my email list. So you either came from Instagram or from email list. And so this is a great, hey, I appreciate that, Lisa. Uh, Lisa's broker uh, recommended it. Um, this is a great example of how incredibly powerful, powerful using IG is. Many of you are on today's call spending an, an hour with me of your precious time to, to like build a relationship, connect and learn all those things because we connect on Instagram. Instagram is one of the best channels to generate listings, but you've got to have the right tactics. So I'm just a huge fan of the strategy. So here's the process for CMA, take a picture, right? Five a day, take a picture, share the IG story, add a poll question, DM everybody who replies. I mean, this is a strategy that works. Okay. We are one fifth of the way through. I feel like we're going to break this thing up, Bethany, into two, into two different sessions. We're one fifth of the way through. Don't worry, this call is going to be recorded. So for those of you who we're going to run out of time towards the end, um, we'll we'll share the recording with you. But hopefully, for many of you, you'll be able to stick around with me the entire session. Okay, we're about we're about to get into we're about to get into our second strategy. So we've only covered the first strategy. Uh, let me just give a quick quick plug here before we move move forward. And by the way, like I said, at the end of today's session, I'm going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to give uh, the breakdown, the formula you need to figure out how to, how to structure your day to achieve your goals. And so just real quickly, for those of you who don't know, my name is Jimmy Mack and I'm the CEO of Curator. At Curator, we help listing agents get more listings. The way that we do that is we do it through branded websites. We do it through email marketing. We do it through content marketing and we do it through listing lead generation. We are absolutely focused, especially in 24, at helping every one of our clients achieve their listing goals. And so if you want, our team will be in touch afterwards. If you want to learn more about how we can help your business, how we provide the technology and the services to help you get listings, I would, and if you, if that is a goal of yours and you're looking to get more listings, at the very minimum, we should have a conversation. So after today's session, my team will reach out to you, everyone individually to see if scheduling a call with our team makes sense to learn more about your business and figure out if there's a possibility for us to work together to help you to achieve your goals. Okay, so let's jump back here. Bear with me one second. We're gonna talk about strategy number two. And we're gonna fly through this one because this one is gonna be fairly straightforward, but it is important, which is how to generate listings from and by the way we got a we got a handful of curator clients in the chat right now so for all my all my c buds in the chat just give a just give a quick shout out in terms of what it's like to work with curator that would that actually be really helpful i know a lot of people right now who are tuning in who are probably thinking about working with us would love to hear from clients directly so for ellie and tammy and anyone else on today's call would love to get some feedback in the chat okay so hidden sellers uh if i I can't think of a stock. If you think about like buyer leads and seller leads and you think about the value of buyer leads and buy, or buyers and the value of sellers, uh, I, I can't think of a, 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 another time in history where like the value of buyers, the perceived value of buyers has dropped so dramatically in such a short amount of time. Now, we all know that that we probably are not going to experience any really impact on 
call it buy side commission for quite some time now. Like it may take a year, two years, and we don't know where this is going to settle in. But really smart agents recognize that there is a real world scenario where that becomes dramatically reduce. And so therefore they're shifting their energy towards listings. Now you can still generate listings from buyers. And this is an important, I think, opportunity a lot of people miss. Realtor Com put out a study on this. 72% of sellers are also buyers. I mean, the buyer leads that you're generating from your social media, from advertising, from email marketing, 72% of them also have a home to sell. Now, your market may be a little bit different. You may have that. Maybe you're in a second home market where your buyers are just not sellers. That's going to be obviously change. Maybe you're in a market where it's really heavy in investment. Maybe you're in a market where, uh, for the most part, people buy and move out of the area, but for the, for, for or buy, uh, buying out of state and moving into the area. Uh, in this instance, though, we know that many of the buyer leads that are in your database, people searching for homes, have a home to sell. So let's go through a couple strategies that you can use. Here's an example of a uh, shout out to, to my guy, Will Draper. Bethany, if you could do us a favor and drop Will Draper's Instagram. You, I'm just going to give you people to follow who I follow and I love because after today's session, I want you to continue to get inspired with great ideas. Will Draper puts out some amazing content on AI, but he's also, I call him kind of the king of polls. And what you see here is this is an example of a poll he ran that got 364 responses, eight, yes, eight buyer leads that were ready to rock. Now that translates in my mind to probably one to two legit sellers that he can also capture. So eight buyers, even on the low end, is likely going to be one to two sellers. So this is why I'm advocating the strategy. Yes, I want you to get buyer leads, but also I want you to get seller leads from your buyer leads. This is the exact poll he ran. Take a picture of a property. Can you guess the price for this home? Now, if I was an agent who was working in a brokerage or had a team, I would ask my team member, I'd ask the, my the fellow listing agent, hey, could I promote your listing on my Instagram profile? I'll give you credit. I'll at tag you. Like it doesn't have to be your listing, but what you're doing is you're using listings to start conversations about real estate that can lead to a someone replying to a poll that leads to you sliding into their DMs, having a conversation. 364 responses, eight ready to go buyer leads, which in my mind translates to one to two listings. Let me give you another example of this. Uh, Vanessa Riley, if you're not following Domo Realty, again, great follow. Uh, I would highly recommend that. We'll drop her link in the chat right now for you. This is where it is uh, she's like giving you kind of a, a little bit of a sneak peek and she's using an Instagram sticker where you can basically enter your information in. Again, from this one post, uh, I'll jump back here for a second. I may have deleted that. Uh, from this, yeah, there it is. Thank you. From this one post, she collected 18 emails, got one buyer showing and one listing app appointment. One Instagram post, two clients. So the way she's doing it, she's just not blindly sharing like, here's my listing, click on this link. She's using the native Instagram sticker where someone can basically enter their information in, getting permission to follow up and then following up and converting those into clients. This absolutely works. Number three is the offer poll. And this is what you can see what Will did. He says, who wants a list of all the available homes, all the available new construction homes in El Paso? Uh, this one got 30 people said yes. Seven people said me. Four more people said me, uh, and then nine said, "Hey, we're not we're not looking to buy a house." So off of this campaign, this agent had generated forty one inbound responses of people saying, "Hey, yeah, I'm interested in new construction properties." That leads to that's forty one leads they can DM, set an appointment with, and all of those forty one leads minimum, there's probably four to six listing opportunities in there. This is how you use Instagram using like buy side angles to generate sell side leads. You with me on this? Whether it's the guess this price, whether it's use the email me the details if you have a listing or whether it's, hey, do you want a li list of listings that kind of like the perfect property? This is how you can generate these types of can uh, these types of results. All right, so this is just a quick, you can take a screenshot of this. Here's what we want you to do. Create an engaging poll, guess the price, send the details or offer a list of new construction. And then once people reply, send a DM. Like, don't wait for them to DM you, slide into their DMs, send them a message. Like, and by the way, if you are on stage session and you reply to the poll, 
uh, like in the IG broadcast channel, we went through, we had 400, 500 people reply to that poll. We DM'd everybody. I mean, that stuff just works. So you've got to go that extra mile to slide into the DMs. All right. So the, I'm going to just go through this quickly. Shout out to my guy, Sharon, Brad McCollum, execute the strength campaign through the curator's email tool. This is a deal of the week. You should just add this to your repertoire every single week. I was talking to my guy, Dean Linnell, one of our longtime clients from Whistler. Uh, shout out to Dean. He um, <clears throat> he does the Friday morning coffee where every Friday he sends out a uh, like update on the market. And he's been doing it for a long time. It's a huge source of his business. Now he just added every Monday the deal of the week. And it doesn't have to be your listing, but just look, look at the format here. He sends an email out every Monday. Hey, here's the recommended deal of the week. He told me, he said, Jimmy, I'm getting multiple calls every Monday when I send this email out. And so I'm just a huge fan of, yes, using IG polls, but then also adding in something like a deal of the week as part of your overall email strategy to generate inbound leads. Okay. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out, by the way, and, and uh, Bethany can drop a link here. <clears throat> For those of you who, who are part of my IG broadcast channel, actually in the chat room right now, I'd love to uh, I'd love to get some feedback here. For those of you who are part of my IG broadcast channel, like, do you read everything that I share in that IG broadcast channel? Yeah, we're getting uh, people saying great value. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I do. And here's the thing is my philosophy on that is I don't waste your time. Meaning when I think about, when I think about marketing, uh, my number one North star is I want to be the most useful person to follow in real estate. And in order for me to do that, I want to make sure I provide information that's valuable, that's tactical, that you can actually use in your business to get results. And so you will very rarely, very rarely see pictures of my kids, see what type of food I'm eating, see what type of planes I'm flying in, what hotels I'm staying in. Like, that's not what I share. And, and that's just my own personal choice. And many people can do that and, and people love that. It's great. But I want every time you see like that little red dot or red circle around my name on Instagram, you see that notification, the message you see is a message from me. It's like, I want you to go, oh, Jimmy just messaged me. I know it's going to be something useful. And the thing is, the reason I love IG broadcast channels and the reason I'm going to encourage all of you to follow my lead here and execute this is because... When you execute an I, when you have an IG broadcast channel, it's like mass text messaging your audience on Instagram. I mean, it's bananas in terms of like the reach and the engagement. And so I've been coaching my client, Jordan Rossman, on this strategy. And so Jordan Rossman, and uh, hopefully my team can grab a link to Jordan Rossman's uh, IG broadcast channel. But if you go to his on your phone, if you search Jordan Rossman, we'll just, just do this together here. If you go to Jordan Rossman, just search Jordan Rossman. Let's pull this up real quick here. Uh, Jordan Ross on Instagram. You'll see he's got 198 people in his IG broadcast channel. And so you, ha you have to do it on a mobile. If you go on mobile, you'll see every like week or so, he's doing an update, which is a deals of the week. So this is something I, I, I think about like distribution channels. And so what I want you to do is I want you to set up, if you have if you have an audience on Instagram or you're building your Instagram audience, I want you to set up an IG broadcast channel. And so just for clarity, an IG broadcast channel gives you the ability to send a uh, direct message DM to anybody who subscribes. And so the beauty of this is that it's, it's as it's going to have the same like open rate as a text message, which is like 90 plus percent of people are going to actually see it. And so if you have a theme, which is in Jordan's case, deal of the week, you can actually get people to subscribe to get information about a real estate deals. So whether it's pre foreclosure, whether it's a home that's going to hit the market, you know, it's going to sell quickly, whether it's the first time the home's ever been listed, it's in a fantastic neighborhood and you know, it's going to get a lot of demand. Jordan drives out to the property grabs his phone, does like a selfie behind it and gives the behind the scenes detail. I mean, this is this is so insanely powerful. And you can see here, I'll just like give you an example. Like look at what he's sharing. Everyone can see my screen right now, right? Like he's actually in front of the property. He's like, hey, here's the details. I just previewed this property. It's coming available. It's not on the MLS yet. Here's, what, here's the information. Text me at this number. And so 
let's put this all together. Let's say you find a great deal, uh, a pre foreclosure or a new home is hitting the market coming soon. It doesn't have to be your listing. And without giving away all the information, you could say, that's a story on Instagram with a poll. That's an email to my database, which is a deal of the week. And that's a message to my IG broadcast channel. I mean, like you can take this, what's going on, Connie? I'm always happy to see Connie Carlson on a call today. Hey, Connie, uh, you could take this idea and you can, this deal of the week idea, and you can distribute it across multiple channels. This strategy is absolutely one of my favorite strategies of 2023. I stumbled across IG broadcast channels late this year. You know, I've got 25,000 followers on Instagram. I just launched my IG channel uh, like maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago. And I've got about 1,500, 1,600 people subscribed to that channel. That channel is, like I said, you just saw the comments. Like it's such a fun way for me to interact with my, with my audience and the people that I try to provide value for. This is something you could do as well. So I, if you subscribe to my channel on IG, like take it and apply it to your market. You guys with me on this? Like that, that's what I want you to do. And Jordan does a fantastic job with this. Okay. So up until this point, we've talked about, we've talked about ZMAs, ZVAs, CMAs. We've talked about the hidden buyer strategy, the engagement poll, the list builder, the offer deal, the deal of the week, the IG broadcast channel, like this stuff, like we're only two thirds of the way through. And these are the strategies that you could be implementing to generate more listing appointments, more conversations, more appointments, and more listings going into 2024. Direct response advertising. All right, we're going on to number three here. I feel like I, I feel like I need a, a water break here. Give me a second. Uh, okay. Number three, number three. So I, I love this strategy. Like this, this, this to me is one of the things that like, uh, we're going to talk about direct response advertising. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm the type of marketing guy who I like getting, I like getting like a call, a click, a response. Now I'm all about building a brand. I'm all about, you know, investing in the long term. but I like, for me, I've been doing marketing for 15 years. Like there's, there's nothing better when someone just raises their hand. Hey, I'm interested because that's really the pinnacle of great marketing is when it's taken someone, a cold prospect and brought them all the way to the, to the red zone or even the goal line. And now you just have to have a conversation with them. This is when we talk about attract, don't trade, chase a curator. This is really what we mean. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I could use a Fiji water sponsorship or, or a beer water cooler style. Yes. I miss the water cooler every day. All right. Uh, <clears throat> you should know this. This is important. You should know this. Uh, Google, Meta and TikTok all have ad libraries in which you can actually search brands to see what the ads are running. Our, our industry right now is getting crushed by these outrageous, egregious referral fees. I mean, 40%, 50%, 60%. That's the future of this. When someone else controls the customer relationship, the, the agent loses, in my opinion. I mean, when someone gets between you and your customers, you lose. And so I'm on a mission to help our clients get more customers and, and to control their brands. I am a advocate for professional real estate agents. I, I, I believe in the, the, the value of homeownership and I believe the value of agents. I've, if you follow me online, you know that. Like, I believe that, I believe that everyone, people who think that every real estate agent is the same has never worked with a great one. And, and I only work with great real estate agents. And I can tell you right now, these individuals absolutely earn their commission. The problem is, is that our industry right now is going through this period where these profit crushing referral fees are forcing agents to sort of give up control of their business or give up, I would say, like the, the opportunity to learn how to generate their own customers for some convenience and certainty. And I, I work with a lot of Zillow Flex agents and a lot of Zillow Flex uh, clients of mine or friends of mine, and they're fantastic entrepreneurs. I mean, they're incredibly smart, intelligent, hardworking. Uh, but once you get addicted to that drug, it, it, it's a it's it's a it's a big problem. I mean, it's hard to break away from that. And so I, I want to teach you and coach you on how to actually get your own customers without having to rely on, on pro profit crushing referral fees, or at the very minimum, diversify your business. So it's not, it's not more than 25, 30% of your overall revenue. So the reason I bring this up is Google's got the ad transparency center 
and this is gonna be some homework for you. I want you to go and say, anybody who sells agents, seller leads on Google, you can search their brand. And when you search their brand, and maybe I can actually just do this live. Uh, Cause I want you to just, I want you to see this. Uh, Cause I think it's so, it's so powerful. Give me one second. I'll pull this up right now. Uh, let's think of a, in the chat for me right now, let's think of a, a, a brand that sells seller leads or offers like a seller lead program. Like home is probably a good example of that. I'll pull up home light. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm actually on Google and I'm looking at every, like, is this mind blowing? I'm looking at every ad, every ad that home light is running right now. And they, they do a great job. And to your address, uh, and to your address, I'm not sure why Google asked me for surveys. You already know everything about me all the time, Google. I don't think you need my survey responses. Um, like this, this is a good example. This is a display ad. Sell your house for cash in less than seven days. Get an offer. So all these companies that are running ads, you can search by, let's do uh, image ads. And you can see all the image. Like, is this mind blowing? You can see Homelight, Realtor, Redfin, Zillow, Open Door, every ad they run, you can see. It's completely there for you. Now you could have done this many, many years ago with, with Meta's ad library, but for the most part, these big brands, if they're trying to get seller leads, they're doing more demand-based advertising, which is on Google. I mean, ha just out of curiosity in the chat right now, how many of you right now have actually used, have used the Google ad transparency center? Like I'm blown away by this. Thank you, Wendy, when he's dropping a link. It's a mouthful. It is the Google Ad Transparency Center. Yeah, if you're on it right now, come back to me. We got still got a lot to cover here. That's gonna be available when we're done here, right? It's it's like so. Whether you want to do Soul.com, we got some great suggestions here from the community. Realtor.com, Nestme, Grizzly Leads, Soul.com, Dave Ramsey. Uh, there's one down in Texas. It's gonna escape me. Bethany, you know which company I'm talking about in Texas that runs um, the seller campaigns. They got some great advertising. Bethany will help me out in the chat here for a second. Uh, we 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 have uh, yeah, Ron seventy two sold. Right, we can look up that brand. So if you are looking to get better at direct response advertising, take a look at these brands who are spending millions of dollars a month on advertising, and say I'm just going to stand on top of the shoulders of giants. If they're running ads and they've been doing so for a long time, chances are that ad works. So you can eliminate the guesswork and remove all the friction involved in running great advertising campaigns. Okay, so let me come back to this slide here. Let me give you a few of my favorite direct response email campaigns and marketing campaigns. This is a campaign that if you send it earlier in the year, because you heard me speak, send it again. Name your price. Hey, Connie, could you finish this sentence for me? If I could sell my house for blank, I would list my home this winter. I can't wait to hear your answer. Direct response, one message, one call to action. And this campaign has generated hundreds of millions of dollars of listings. This is a campaign that we created at Curator uh, early last year, we just keep telling people, send it every four to six months and you're going to get listings. You can also translate it into a direct mail campaign. Shout out to my client, uh, Gretchen Coley. Uh, I, I always say it's, it's the old Warren Buffett line. I'd rather wrestle a grizzly bear than compete with Gretchen Coley. Like I would rather, like Gretchen Coley is a force of nature down the Raleigh market. We did the direct mail campaign for her. Same idea. If I could sell my house for blank, I would list my home this spring. 130 conversations from this one campaign, eight listings. This is self-reported from Gretchen. 130 conversations, eight listings. Now, here's the thing. Gretchen didn't just send the postcard and wait for people to actually reply. She sent the postcard, got a few replies, but then also picked up the phone and made phone calls. You heard me earlier talk about how to get an ROI from direct mail marketing. You got to actually go the extra mile and not just send the postcard, but make the phone call as well. Now, here's the key. Here's the key. At Curator, we actually provide a direct mail library where we organize all of our best direct mail campaigns that are uh, that are Canva compatible. So our clients can take those direct mail campaigns that we're creating or that we're you know, getting inspired and we like let them just add their branding, add their information and send those out the door. It's one of, the, one of my favorite things that we do at Curator is our direct mail library. Uh, direct response advertising, name your price. Let me give you another example. Shout out to my guy, Jason Cassidy, $800,000 appointment. This was the email, the Godfather strategy, an offer you can't refuse. If a buyer offered you more than 15% above your estimate, would you sell? This could be, if you got small handwriting, this could be on the sticky note of the ZMA that you're dropping off 
in your farm. You with me? Like if a buyer offered you more than 15% above your estimate, would you sell? That number could be 5%. It could be 7%. It could be 3%. It doesn't make a difference because what we're trying to do here is not get them to list their property. We're trying to get them to have a conversation, which then allows us to assess whether or not they actually have a desire to sell. And then we can book the appointment. So these are conversation starters. This is a great example of that. This is this, this is the CEO of Groupon. He made the biggest mistake of any public presenter, which is always button that top button. I have made that mistake before. For those of you who attended Excellence many years ago, you remember the, the classic v, a v neck incident I had, which looked like I was wearing a female V neck shirt, always button that top button. Groupon was one of those companies that IPO'd, it was the biggest IPO since Google. Unfortunately, Groupon ran into a brick wall in the public markets. Their stock plummeted. And as a result, the CEO had to resign. And he wrote, he wrote, one of the most famous resignation letters of all time. He said, people of Groupon, after four and a half intense and wonderful years as CEO of Groupon, I've decided that I'd like to spend more time with my family. Just kidding. I was fired today. And the reason why people resonate and the reason why people talk about this letter, even like five, seven years later, is because there's power in truth in your marketing. There's a great line, which is a small admission is how you gain large acceptance. It's a principle in advertising. A small admission is how you gain large acceptance of an idea. And so this is an example of what I would call truth in marketing. There are 55,000 realtors in North Carolina, but only few who are brave enough to tell you the truth. The real estate gold rush is over, but this might surprise you. Just last month, 807 people bought a home in Raleigh. And then we talk about the USP of this. This is a campaign we ran in, in uh, we ran it in Raleigh. We ran it in uh, Beverly Hills. We ran it in Maui. This campaign works. This is the Groupon truth strategy. Tell people what they already know with your direct mail marketing. By the way, quick pro tip here for you. The yellow letters complete is one of my favorite providers for creating these yellow letters that show up in a small little envelope that are handwritten by a robot that have a sticky note. You're not going to use them every month, but you are going to use them frequently as a way to engage your audience to kind of stand out in the mailbox. All right. So this is another example of direct response advertising. Um, we'll keep it rolling here. Name your price, the godfather strategy, the yellow letter strategy. These are things you can do to get responses. But again, as your homework, we didn't have time to cover all these ideas today. As your homework, I want you to use the Google Ad Transparency Center. Look at Homelight. Look at 72 Sold. Look at Open Door. Let's see what other ads they're running to get sellers. And let's apply that to our business. Okay. We're we're going to... It's 2.06 right now. Okay. We're already over. Here's what I want to do. I want to... We're going to schedule because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. We're going to schedule a set. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the end here for a second. We're going to schedule a encore for today's session in which we'll give you, we'll give you, because I've got probably 45 minutes more of content. Um, we're going to schedule an encore of today's session where we're going to go through the, the remaining ideas that we have. Uh, and, and what's going to be really powerful about this is we'll recap some of the highlights and then we'll do an encore. We'll cover all, all the details. But let me let me just jump ahead for a hot second here, because I want what I want to do is I want to talk to you about because I promised you at the beginning of today's session, I promised you at the beginning of today's session that uh, that I was going to give you the formula that you need to identify how much time you want to invest in prospecting. So as I'm giving you these these ideas, the ZMA, the ZVA, the CMAs the direct response advertising, the Godfather strategy, the name your price strategy, the polls, the stories, the Instagram uh, broadcast channel. You have to, we have to say to ourselves, okay, let me try to, let me try to say how much time per day do I need to invest in marketing? And so before I do that, before I do that, before I do that, so I'm gonna give you the answer before I do that. Let me just show you something because I'm just so proud of the work that our product engineering team and the whole team of curators have been doing behind the scenes. So for our customers on today's call, I'm very excited for you guys to see this. But I want, I want to give you a sense of what we're building at Curator because as a company, as many people don't know what Curator does, like we are a software and service business. We provide marketing software. We provide marketing services. We do so in a way 
that's designed to help you get listings. Like that is our, our goal. And so what I want to do, just show you real quickly what we're, what we built the curator. I think it's just incredible. These are some of the new things that we've been rolling out. And I'll just give you some perspective on this. So we have this, this basic belief of curator that every single time you have a listing, you can turn that listing into more listings. And you could do so by building landing pages, by sending email campaigns, by running Facebook ads, right? These are techniques that we know work. We've seen it work now for over 10 years with our clients. And so we wanna build software that supports that. So what you're looking at right now is we, we wanna build the world's most uncomplicated, simple, does not require a PhD, does not require six hours of training and certification. We wanna build the world's most simple and intuitive marketing software. So what you're looking at right now is one of our clients who has a listing, and if this client wants to take this listing and turn it into a landing page, all they have to do is click on create a landing page, choose the status. We will use AI to generate the headline for them. And that will carry through, like it'll look at the information about the property and give you the information. So we'll generate the headline for them. So we're, they're not having to type anything. They're going to tell us what type of, you know, do they have any images or they want to use a map? They're going to tell us when this listing is going to go live and they're going to generate the listing landing page. And that's it. It's done. Now, at which point I'll just show you what this looks like. This is, and I'll just refresh this for you. This is the landing page I just built for that listing. I mean, like most agents don't even use a landing page. And if you do use a landing page, it can take hours to build this. We're releasing this feature to clients this week. This is our brand new coming soon landing page. As you can see here, it's got a countdown, get early access. This is when we gather information from the consumer. And this is something I absolutely love about our new landing page experience is that when you go to the, this is what we call the enrichment page. After you capture the lead, as an example, you know, this is where I'm telling you, what's your budget? Do you need help with the financing? Are you like looking to make a move? And oh, by the way, do you currently have a home to sell? Yes or no. So the process of building these landing pages that we're doing for customers now is literally like three clicks of a button. It's click, 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 click. You're done. And you've got a beautifully designed landing page that now you're going to be using to send emails and posts on Facebook to generate leads, leads that also have homes to sell as well. Let me give you another quick example of this. I'll back up here for one second. Let's say I wanted to actually send an email for this listing. One of the things that we do right now, Curator, is we have this. Uh, we have an email marketing tool that we built. So we actually can create an email blast, uh, email campaign, and we use AI to create the email for the customer. And so all the tactics that we coach here, we'll bring it all together and you'll see like it will actually build the email in real time. And so what's so powerful about this is that we know marketing's hard. We know marketing takes a long time. We know that it, you don't know what to do, when to do it. We're building software that enables us to execute marketing ideas that work. And let me give you one last thing I'm going to share with you. And then we're going to get back to what I promised you, which is, and this is something I'm just so incredibly excited about, is we are building probably one of the most important tools we've ever built in our 10-year history of Curator is we call it the Marketing Performance Report Tool which allows you, whether you go into a listing presentation or whether you are communicating with a seller or you want to showcase the fact that you're great at your job, we're building a tool that allows you to highlight and showcase all of the marketing you do around a listing in one simple experience. And let me just pull this up so you can see this. And so we're releasing this in early 24 for clients. And what you're looking at is a tool that effectively will have the property, this we call it the marketing performance report, You'll have the property, you'll have all the metrics around the property. How many people did you reach? How many views? How many inquiries? How big was your audience? We'll include examples of the landing pages that we're building through our software, active listings, right? We'll include the social media campaigns. So the Instagram stories, the YouTube, the YouTube videos, the email campaigns, the Facebook posts, the ads, it will all be there. We'll also aggregate some of the portal data for customers. So we're building this tool for customers. So every time they walk into a listing appointment, because they're executing the strategies that we coach or we're doing them for them, they're going to be able to showcase all the things they've done to sell 
their neighbor's home. When they're servicing the customer, the customer's like, hey, my house isn't sold in three weeks. What are you doing? They're going to be able to share with them the marketing performance report that highlights all the marketing they're doing. When the home sells, they'll have an artifact that will be on their website, which will showcase the proof. And so I just want to take a quick break here because a curator, you know, many people who are part of today's session, they follow me on Instagram. Maybe you're on our email list, but you don't know that a curator, we build software and we have services. And so our team will reach out to you to go into more details, but I want, I want you to see where we're going because we believe that in 24, you have got to be listing obsessed. So all the tools, all the services that we're building are designed to help you get there. Okay. So let's end today's session. And thank you so much on the feedback. And by the way, I'm going to stick around for questions in the, in the, in the Q&A. Bear with me one second here. Okay. You should be able to see my screen. Okay. So as I promised at the beginning of today's session, we've done the math. We've done the math on this. If you want to get 10 listings, you have to spend 31 minutes per day, right? 30 minutes per day, marketing and prospecting. If you execute the ZMA strategies, the ZVA strategies, if you're prospecting, if you're promoting your listings, if you're doing the just the Instagram polls, if you're spending 30 minutes per day, you will get 10 listings. If you want 20 listings, it needs to be an hour per day. If you want to get 30 listings, it needs to be 90 minutes per day. And the thing that I want to caution you against is that doing it for two hours, two days a week, and then being inconsistent is not going to get you the results you're looking for. So what we did is we looked at of the 4,600 listings we've generated in the last 53 days with uh, Tom Ferry and I have generated. We did the math on this. We looked at how much time does it take to execute these ideas? How, you know, how much effort does it take? And then we worked backwards to say, this is how much time you have to invest. That you have to commit to. And so the strategies matter, but the strategies without execution are not going to get you results. And so what I want you to do is say, based on this incredible amount of data that we have at Curator, like this is the formula you need. So if you're a team that wants to get a hundred listings, hundred listings next year, your team has got to be putting in 300 minutes per day, which is, you know, someone do the math for me, five hours per day. So across your team, there's going to be five hours of like targeted, thoughtful, outbound, inbound marketing. Like you've got to execute these ideas five hours per day. And what we find is the vast majority of people in our industry spend less than like an hour a week. And the reason why they are don't get the results is because when they're not busy, they hustle and hustle and hustle until they get a listing uh, or a few listings and a few customers. And as soon as they, their pipeline's full, they stop marketing, they stop advertising, they stop selling. And so they go through this vicious cycle where when, they're, when everything, when the world's on fire, their back is against the wall, they'll get customers. But as soon as they get customers, they stop marketing because their pipeline's full. And then the business closes out and then the backs against the wall again. You can break this vicious cycle by having a dedicated strategy where every day you're allocating the appropriate amount of time relevant to your goals to generate the listings you want to generate. And so I would say going into 24, it's time to get dead serious about this. Make sure that you're committed to this. I can't tell you what your goals are. You only know what your goals are. What I can tell you is if you want to hit your goals, this is how much time and energy and effort you're going to have to put into marketing and, and, and prospecting to achieve that. So on that note, if you want to stay connected to me, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Jimmy Mackin, subscribe to my broadcast channel. Uh, we will send out an email with the recording. We will also schedule before the end of the year. It is only November 28th. We will schedule a uh, an encore session, which will cover the the last two strategies. And I mean, we got some fantastic ideas in that strategies in the strategies. Uh, so we'll schedule an encore session. So so be on the lookout on Instagram and on the email list for those ideas. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of today's session. It was a lot of fun. Um, so thank you so much for being part of today's session. We will send out the uh, slides. We will send out the recording and I will stick around here for a few questions. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, appreciate all the love in the chat right now. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Camille. Thanks, Rhonda. Okay. So let's see here. Yeah, Connie, you're gonna love that tool. The marketing performance report is is mind blowing. We just 
we're incredibly excited about working on that. Yeah, M Melissa, do me a favor. Just send me an email at jimmy at curator.com. Uh, I'm on the road a lot. Uh, so the more heads up, the better. Uh, we'll certainly uh, figure out a way if we can, we can make that work. Yeah. Uh, Rosal, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Uh, yes, uh, we will include that in the slides for you. So you'll have the net sheet email. Josh, when will our team be reaching out for more info? Josh, our team will reach out right away. We have a, uh, uh, we have uh, probably a ton of inbound inquiries. Hey, Diane, good to see you on today's call. Uh, we have a, probably a ton of inquiries, but I, I would say I would say within the next hour or so, Josh. If you haven't, Josh, if you if you haven't heard from them, like by end of the day today, um, like my team's watching right now, Josh, they'll they'll, they'll certainly. Uh, Certainly see your comment there. If you don't hear about any day today, just send send me send me a DM on Instagram. I'll be I'll be able to make sure we nudge them. Okay, yeah, sure thing, Kayla. Yeah. By the way, if you want to get more information about Curator, just drop your email in the chat right now. Our team will uh, our team will make sure that we prioritize and we'll follow up afterwards. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mark Carr, my guy, Mark Carr, who is uh, on the call today. Uh, great to see you on the call. Mark's been a client. Mark, Mark, you're probably like one of the first like 15 clients we had, uh, which is just, it's incredible that, you know, it's been 10 years later, we're still working together and doing amazing work, my friend. Um, so appreciate the love there. Yeah. Again, if you, if you want to get more information, just drop your email in the chat. That way we make sure we reach out to you right away after today's session. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure thing, Kayla. Yep. So Katie's question, what are your thoughts on events? Do you layer it on and start inviting them to leads once you, uh, do you layer them in and start inviting these leads once you have a connection with them? So, so yeah, Katie, uh, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of events. Uh, one of my clients, uh, Mike Hines and Scott Euler were the number one, number one uh, broker in Cincinnati. Uh, they actually built out an entire event space. It's really beautiful. Mike Hines is a developer. That guy does just amazing work. They built an entire event space because they just invest so heavily in the community. And so I'm just a huge fan of events. I, I would actually, my 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 advice on events though, having having hosted many events, um, events where customers, like my my advice is it's better to have a friend with a boat than to, to own the boat yourself. And what I mean by that is I would work with local businesses who already have a venue and already have let's say an establishment that's food and alcohol and, and whatever, like coffee shops, restaurants. And I would collaborate with them in a way, maybe with two other partners, like a, like a little bit of a BNI to like everyone invites people. So everybody benefits from it. So you're, yes, it's not your event. It's, you know, it's this other event that you're like, maybe it's a charity you're raising money for, you know, the local, local girl soccer team or your, or your, uh, you know, uh, giving back to uh, families in need during the holidays. But I would, I would like partner with people to do events because events can be expensive. Uh, Maureen Fallen, the queen of Queens has a uh, seller seminars. So for all my Tom Ferry folks on today's call, you guys all know the details about that. One of my favorite strategies she shared this past year. So seller seminars are great, like event, like a real estate event. But I would absolutely be doing events, uh, but I would do so in collaboration with my community. Uh, Savannah, I would say if the ZMA is not working for leads, I would go back to looking for the SOI. The depth of your connection really does matter. So I would I would actually go to the ZMA strategy for, for uh, like direct mail before you send it to internet leads. Internet leads don't know who you are. They don't trust you. They don't have a pre-established relationship. So some of those strategies can be less effective if you don't have that in place. That's why the ZMA strategy is so effective for uh, people in your SOI was already an established relationship. And be sure to be texting, not emailing. That's really important. There you go. Yeah, that's amazing. So shout out to Katie. Katie actually implemented the Marine Fallen uh, Marine Fallen, Queen of Queens, seller seminars, four million dollars in business this past year. Amazing. Yeah, if you if you want to learn more about working together with curator, 
we service top producing solo agents. We work with rainmakers who have a team. We work with brokerages who have multiple teams. Just drop in the com just drop in the comments now your email address, and uh, my team will be in touch with you ASAP. All right, I'm gonna come back for a few more questions here before we wrap today's session. Yeah, we'll get the recording out. Uh, I, I, the name is going to escape me. I, Bethany, if you want to make a note, people are asking about that Houston, Texas seller company. The name escapes me and it's driving me crazy now. We will, I'll show that on the Encore webinar. Yeah, thanks, Joshua. Awesome. So uh, I think, I'm sorry, oh, here's a few more questions. Um, so Andrew was asking, what are soft and easy to answer like questions? So um, so soft and easy to answer questions. Soft and easy to answer questions. Uh, I'm always a fan of asking open-ended questions. Like, let me give you an example of this. Uh, I know many of you know this because I've always joked about it, that I co-wrote the book Exactly What to Say for Real Estate Agents. Now, we started this project maybe five years ago, and now we have, um, we've actually sold 100,000 copies of the book, which is wild. 100,000 audio, audiobook versions and, and copies. One thing that we talked about in that book was uh, opening fact questions, a framework we use in our marketing is a framework we use in sales. Uh, polite opening, mutually agreeable fact easy to answer question. So an easy to answer question, let's say if I'm calling a, a lead that came in off of one of my listings, let's say you're using a curator listing landing page. I say, you know, Hey, Hey, Jonathan, uh, this is Jimmy calling with ABC Realty. Uh, the reason that I'm reaching out is I just received your request for more information about one, two, three main street. Is this the only property you're looking at or are you actively in the market? So regardless of whether they are only interested in this property, which is great when can we schedule a showing, or if they're just like actively browsing or actively in the market, I, I can take the conversation in, in either direction. What you don't want is you don't want to close and a, a question where their response ends the conversation. So just in your mind, like when I think about asking any question, like a, a when, a when is like, when's the last time you got your a professional home value update? Or did you receive the information I sent to you? No, I didn't. Yes, I did. In either scenario, you can take that conversation and start asking more following questions that go into more detail on it. So opening fact question is a framework we use, but just when you think about an easy to answer question, it's one where either answer doesn't stop the conversation. Either answer can take you down a different conversation path. Uh, my my co-author, Phil M. Jones, like to say, whoever is asking the questions is in control of the conversation. So don't see control by asking a question that's a closing the question. Uh, we got a question about, do we run pay-per-click advertising campaigns? Yes, we do. Uh, Cynthia was saying, do you work with super tiny, small brokerages or do you only work with super big teams? Cynthia, we work, we work with listing agents who want more listings. And so, yes, because we, we tend to work on an exclusive basis in every market, uh, we tend to work with agents who are doing a minimum, you know, seven to $10 million a year in production, I would say is probably towards the floor. Anything less than seven to 10 million is, um, is likely going to be, uh, Probably, probably not going to be probably going to be too price constricted for you. I would say, but if you're doing over seven million dollars in production, or you're right at that threshold, and you really want to go to to fifteen, twenty, or beyond, then uh, we would be we would be certainly worth having a conversation. Yeah, Chris is saying, what happens if this estimate is much higher than the actual price? It's about having a conversation. Um, it's about having a conversation. Like I, that's okay. It's the conversation is like. We think like we think this number is wrong. <laughs> like that's a, hey, the estimate is based on the. I, I think you should. I, I would want to know as a homeowner. I would want to know if my uh, my uh, property was worth a lot less than his estimate. And so just think about it not as a. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to defend the market. The market doesn't have feelings. Your job is to be a professional who communicates what's happening. And so we don't want to have this preconceived notion that people are like, they're upset if their home is worth less than this estimate because they may not even know, uh, they may not even have, like they may have bought the home 10 years ago and 
they bought for like, you know, 150,000. Now it's worth $850,000. Who cares if it's worth 850 and his estimate says 875? Like they're already so far in the black on this thing that they're over the moon happy about it. Yeah, thank you so much, Ken. Uh, appreciate the love there. Uh, Ken's been a single agent now for seven years in San Diego, uh, working with us for a long time. Yeah, we get the question all, oftentimes on the ROI of, of Curator. You know, for us, Christian, of course, we like, we're looking to get results. We're looking to get listings. What we, what we really hang our hat on is when we think about the clients we work with, we work with 550 teams across the country. We were doing, I was talking with the team this morning. They're going to sell about $20 billion, $20 billion a year this year in real estate. It's 550 teams, $20 billion in real estate. If we were a brokerage, we'd probably be in the top 25 brokerages across, across uh, North America. Um, so for us, you know, some things are really easy to measure direct, direct ROI, like, Hey, um, Getting uh, running pay per click advertising and getting a lead and converting that lead that's a really easy way to measure direct ROI. Uh, direct ROI. Other other very difficult ways are if you're using curators email marketing services and we're emailing your SOI every week with really valuable content that we're creating for you, uh, and then you get a referral or repeat customer. Is it the email campaign that we sent because we're staying in touch with your SOI, or is it is something else you did, or did you just do an amazing job the first time and they remembered you? Like we try to check all those boxes. Like what we care most about is your business. You have a healthy, growing, profitable business. That's what we care most about. And of course, whenever possible, we certainly look for those direct ROI attributes. Yeah, Melissa, if you go to our website, curator.com, we have we we're very transparent. All the information is right there. Awesome. Okay. Uh wow. Then oh, there it is. Bethany. Photo finish. The company that keep, I keep talking about, like that, that's like driving me crazy. The company, and write this down because we have now still like a hundred people on today's call. The company is called Orchard. That's O-R-C-H-A-R-D. They do amazing advertising. Take a look at Orchard on Google, uh, Ad Transparency Center, and on Meta. They got some of the best ads I've seen out there. Thank you, Bethany. Appreciate the love there. Okay. Thanks so much for being part of today's session. As always, if you want to uh, stay in touch with the curator, follow me on Instagram, send me a DM. Thank you for taking this hour and a half and spending with me today. I appreciate the love. For all of you who responded in the chat right now, our team will reach out directly uh, for more information and, and we will be getting the recording out with the slides. Thanks so much for being part of today's session. I hope you have a wonderful week and uh, let's get ready to do some work. Thanks everyone.